Today we're going to look at some quick strategies when dealing with problems, addition or subtraction problems, that have a missing digit. So as you can see here, I have three different addition problems. Each one is missing a digit somewhere in the problem, but we do have the sum of all of these problems, and it's our job to figure out what these missing digits are. So let's go through some strategies and things to think about when you're solving these types of problems. When we look at this first problem, you want to kind of look at it in the same way that you would when you are normally adding up numbers. And we simply need to figure out what this digit is that needs to be added to 7. Remember that you're going to start with your 1's place, as always, and then work your way over to the 10's place. Now a lot of people might try the guess and check method, where you can just enter in numbers here and add it up and see if it would work for this particular problem. So if I guessed the digit 1, 7 plus 1, well that equals 8, not 9, so I know that that's not it. I could try some other numbers, I could try 5, I could try 7, you get the point here. We're trying to find out numbers that would work, but if I look at part of my answer, I know that I have a 9 in the 1's place down here in my sum, so I can think about what plus 7 would give me 9, or if you think about your fact families, 7 plus something equals 9, or 9 minus something equals 7, or even 9 minus 7 equals that missing number. So this might be a great way to solve this particular problem, and think of what is 9 minus 7, well that's 2, we can plug that in, and now we can see that 7 plus 2 does equal 9, and you always do want to check all of your place values, and so we're going to go over here to the tens place, 3 plus 1 does equal 4. So we know that our missing number is 2 there. Let's go on to this problem here in the middle. Here we have the tens place that's being added that is missing. But again, we're going to start with our ones place, just as we always do, because we could have some regrouping happening here. So we want to check if that's happening first before we just dive in and try to figure out this number. So 4 plus 5, that does equal 9, and we don't have anything that's being regrouped to the next place value. So now we can just simply try to figure out 5 plus what equals 8. So again, we can kind of use this fact family, 5 plus something equals 8, or 8 minus 5 equals that mystery number, and we know that that is 3. And we can check that 5 plus 3 does equal 8. All right, let's take a look at this last addition problem. Again, we're going to start with the ones place. We don't want to just jump into the tens place right off the bat. You, if you do look at the tens place first, you might think that this number is 6 because 6 plus 3 does equal 9. However, let's take a look at our ones place first. 4 plus 7 equals 1. Hmm, that doesn't seem right to me. What is 4 plus 7? Well, 4 plus 7 equals 11, which means that we would have a 1 that's regrouped into the tens place, and then our 1 would go down here in the ones place for our sum. So now we have to take into consideration this 1 when we are adding up whatever our mystery number is, plus 3, that will give us the sum of 9. So let's see, 1 plus something plus 3 equals 9. Well, I know that 1 plus 3 is 4, so I could think of this as 9 minus 4 equals our mystery number. So our mystery number must be 5. And again, we can check that 5 plus 1 is 6, 6 plus 3 is 9. All right, let's take a look at some subtraction problems. So we're going to use the same method here, but obviously we're subtracting instead of adding. But I want you to think about that ones placed first and then move to your tens place because we can still have regrouping even when we're subtracting. So here we've got 7 minus something equals 3 and then 5 minus 1 equals 4. So let's take a look at this. I don't see any regrouping necessary because this number is smaller than the number that we're starting with up here. 
that kind of signals to me that we're subtracting a number that's smaller than seven in order to get three. So seven minus whatever our mystery number equals three. Again, think of those fact families. So that can also be written as three plus something equals seven, which might be an easier way to think about this problem as an addition rather than a subtraction problem. So that mystery number would be four. So seven minus four equals three. We didn't have to regroup. Five minus one equals four. Great, so we get 43 for that one. Here we have our mystery number up here in the top number. So something minus five equals seven. What minus five equals seven? So think about this carefully. This number will have to be a pretty big number in order to take away five from it and get seven, right? So if we're thinking about those fact families and how to change this to an addition problem, you could think seven plus five equals our mystery number, right? So what is seven plus five? Well, that's 12, but can, can we write just a 12 there in this one spot? This is supposed to be a single digit in here that we're missing. So let's think about how this would work as a subtraction problem. If we had a single digit of two here in this spot, if we had 62 minus 25, well, we would look at this and say, huh, two isn't enough to take away five because two is smaller than five. So we need to regroup. So that means we're gonna take away from the six, change this into a five, and then add the one. So this is how we get that 12 in the ones place that we need to subtract five and get seven as our answer. And then we will also want to check to make sure that our tens place makes sense with that regrouping. So if we change this six to five, let's see, what is five minus two? That does equal three, so we're good here. So we know that our missing number was two. Great, let's try one more. Again, we're gonna start with the ones place, but our missing number is here in the tens place, so that's going to be part of it. Um, one minus six, can we do that? No, not really. Again, we're going to have to regroup, right? So we're taking away one from the tens place, we're adding 10 to the ones place, so now we have 11 minus six. 11 minus six does equal five, and that helps us with our tens place here because if we had just put in a number here that we thought made sense with eight, that wouldn't have been the correct number because we need to think of this now as seven. Seven minus what equals three? Sorry, seven minus something equals three. Okay, so another way to think about this is three plus mystery number equals seven. Remember that when you have addition problems, when we're talking about fact families, when you have addition problems, your larger number always goes at the end here as the answer or the sum. When you have subtraction problems, your larger number needs to start at the beginning, start off the subtraction problem at the beginning. So let's see, three plus what equals seven? That would have to be four. I hope that these strategies help you when you come across these missing digits in addition and subtraction problems. Thanks so much. See you next time.